Well, hello, hello, hello. Been a while, hasn't it? Or it seems like it's been a while to me since I've talked to you. But lately I just didn't seem to have anything to tell you. No good stories, what have you. Of course, I told y'all about my car wreck and we're getting that all taken care of, the insurance, and I'm getting another car. Actually, I've already got it. It's at the mechanic now having him check it out, so make sure it's safe to drive. And it hasn't been easy for the last three weeks without a car. I'm sure most of you know what that's like. Can't go anywhere, can't do anything. You don't have a car to drive. So I've had to depend on Jan, my daughter, and my granddaughter, Jessica. They take turns taking me to the grocery. We usually go out to eat and then we uh, go to Kroger. And I try to get up everything that I can and I hurry when I'm with them. I'll say this though, when I go with them, I spend half as much money because I don't go every aisle. They never go every aisle. aisle. They go, they grab whatever it is they need and they're gone. No, not me, I can't do it that way. They may get something in new that I might like. So I've got to check out every aisle. So anyway, they take care of my needs in that aspect. And uh, we're going to have me a car ready to drive, I hope, this week. Now let's see, what else? Okay. It's gloomy outside. Been gloomy all day long. And what I wanted to show you today, I really needed a bright, sunshiny day. And even at that, I needed to film in the morning. Well, this 5.30 in the afternoon, I guess you all changed your clocks last night, didn't you? Well, the ones that change automatically have been changed. I've still got the others that I say, well, one of these days, the time's going to change back, so they'll be on the right time. All right. Let's see what we're going to talk about. Oh, I know. I'm going out of town next week. Jan's going with me, and her friend Susan is going. This is going to be a pleasure trip. First, we're going to Cumberland Falls State Park. Some of you may not have heard of it, but most of you have, because it has... Uh, the only moon bow in the world. There used to be two. Nigeria Falls, Africa used to have the big moon bow and they changed the lay of the land somehow or other and they lost their moon bow. So now Cumberland Falls is the only uh, place that has the moon bow. If you're not familiar with it, <clears throat> The moon bow comes at midnight or after midnight when there's a full moon. Once a month, every month, you can see the moon bow at Cumberland Falls. A lot of people drive a lot of miles just to see it. It's been a long time since I've seen it. And the mist over the falls, when the moon gets to a certain point, you see the rainbow except it's a moon bow. Now when I was in high school the kids would go down there. Graduation everybody gathered on the beach and that's where they celebrated graduation. All right Cumberland Falls State Park was built in the 1930s. It was during the depression years. Roosevelt had to come up with some kind of plan to get people back to work. They were hungry, they needed jobs, and they couldn't find jobs. So he planned had federal government would be building courthouses, schools, parks, streets, sidewalks, all that sort of thing. Cumberland Falls State Park was going to be built. They needed someone to supervise the building of 
a bridge, the lodge, and some log cabins in the park. My dad was hired to supervise the building of Dryland Bridge. Dryland Bridge, of course, was over forest. The old bridge there looked so horrible and so dilapidated, I wouldn't even have walked across it, much less get in a car and drive across it. So my dad finished Dryland Bridge, and when that was completed, his crew built DuPont Lodge. DuPont Lodge is still there, so is Dryland Bridge. And the, of course, the cabins are there too. So, I can lay claim to fame, you might say, for my dad. All right, that's where I'm going this next week. I'm going to a uh, storytelling festival. If you've never been to one, they are such fun. People tell the most fascinating stories. They tell funny stories. They make up stories. But I'm going to be there as one of the guest speakers. I get to tell a story. And they say one thing I can do is talk. Yes, I've been known I can talk. So I get to tell my story this time. And the story I'm going to tell is not one of the usual funny stories or what have you, but it's going to be a story about World War II. I'm going to do the best I can with it. I hope I can hold their attention because this is a part of history when I was a little girl. So I'll be telling you about it later. And Jan is going to video me when I have my part on the program. And if it turns out okay, I'll be putting it on Chit Chat with Granny Pat. You'll get to see my true story that I'm going to tell. Now, after we leave Cumberland Falls, we're going south, the three of us. We're going to Alabama. I was there this time last year. It was a fun, fun trip. Now, the thing we are attending in Alabama is called Beautiful Table Settings Bash. Beautiful Table Settings is a website that has about 165,000 members and all of those members love that website. You can learn so much. If you like to decorate, if, if you like to collect china and crystal, silver, you want to do pretty dining tables, holiday situation, oh, anytime, then this is the website you want to see or maybe even become a member of. So this, the administrator of this group lives in Alabama. She lives in a little place called Wetumpka. I'd never heard of such a place in my life. Sometimes I can't remember how to pronounce it or even remember it. But that's where it's gonna be held again this year. And I'm looking forward to it. They had almost 500 women there last year and about a dozen men, you know, few husbands came along. It's a delightful thing to do. But the one thing that Susan and Jan and I will be doing along the way is looking for thrift shops and Goodwill stores because they deal in antiques and they have booths in antique malls and they do a very good job. The malls are very nice and they, they have a nice selection of items that they sell. So, of course, I just go to collect for myself because I like to collect. Doesn't matter what it is. I've reached the point though, uh, I don't have any place to put things anymore. 
So I had to cut back. And I still can't resist a good bargain, though. I want to show you behind me. Now, this is not going to be easy to see because the lighting is not good. If it was morning and the sun was shining, it would be beautiful because what I have on my credenza, when the sun comes through this window on my collection, it just glistened like diamonds. Well, we're not going to get that this afternoon because it's just dreary out there. And I don't have the right lighting to make this show up. Someday, I'm going to be taking some classes and learn how to do the camera and how to video. Well, I don't count on it happening anytime soon. So don't you expect it anytime soon either. Now, what I'm showing you today is more of my Astoria American. This didn't start as a collection. I had a neighbor about 25, 30 years ago who had the round cake stand and I bought it from her. After that, I that was it. About 10 or 12 years ago, my grandson was getting married in Florida. Jan and I were there for the wedding and we were hitting the Goodwills and thrift shops while we were there. We couldn't buy much because we were flying. And we went in a Goodwill and I, looking at the dishes and I found three um, salad plates. A story American, dollar each. Huh? Might as well buy them, you know. Why not? So I bought them. The years passed. I never bought another piece until about a year and a half ago. And this was just about the time I joined the Beautiful Table Settings website. I had had some new thing to show. If I was going to display my dining table or collections of china, what have you, I had to get out there and buy a few things. And I like a bargain better than anything else. Won't buy it unless it's a bargain, no matter how much I like it. So I'm going to show you a few, a few now, a few pieces of my Fostoria. Uh, these are serving pieces. The plates are still in the cabinet. Glasses are still in the cabinet. Oh, dessert dishes and serving dishes, they're still in the cabinet because I don't have enough room on my credenza to display all that stuff and, you, and it would just look like a, a jumbled up bunch of dishes. So I'm going to start showing you one thing at a time. And I'm not going to point out everything here. I just hope that you can see what I've got and I'll guarantee you everything on this credenza was a bargain price. I'm going to guess 99 cents to 5.99, except for one piece. And that would be that square cake stand that I showed you in another video that Jan gave me for Christmas. So let's start with my round cake stand. I'm going over here and get it. Let's see if I I'm going to turn this a little bit. Now, I just hope you can see it. All right. This little piece on top, I don't know exactly what it is called, but I just call it a little mayonnaise dish with a, a lid because it's just the right size for that. I'm going to put it over to one side. This is one of my favorites. You're going to hear me say that many times. One of my favorites. It's got the little dog feet. It's very flat. And I just kind of think of it as, as a little tidbit dish. It is so pretty when you put it on the table. That's that. Now, 
here is my round cake stand. It's the oldest piece I've got. And it was, I bought it from a friend. I just got a note from her thanking me for sending flowers. Her son died about two weeks ago. And I was just heartbroken when I received her message. But this is the cake stand I got from her. I'll put it back. It's sitting on a plate. I'm not sure it's a dinner plate. I think it's more of a, uh, an under plate that you would put under a, a vase or something, anything, whatever. This is a little vase that a friend of mine gave me. She had some fostoria, and when she broke up her housekeeping, this is what she gave me, pretty little vase. This, this is my ice bucket. It has these things on the side. You can see them? Okay. These somehow had a handle. I don't know how. Maybe this was one that did not have handle, but it's an ice bucket. Here are a couple of little rounded dishes. They also have the dog feet. I've got three, three or four of these. They're very nice when you're setting a table, just strawberries, blueberries, nuts, anything you want to put in those. There again, another of my favorites. I call it the triangle bowl. See how pretty that is? Oh, it's just gorgeous when the sun hits it. And then here's the small one. So they, I don't remember where I got these. I'm getting to where I can't remember where I bought them, but you can count on it being a thrift shop, an estate sale, or a Goodwill. I don't shop much in antique shop because I like the price of the other places. Now these I got at Goodwill and I know I paid 99 cents each for them. These are little relish dishes and celery dishes, you know, for the three different sizes here. Get a close look. There you go, see? They're great for parties. Got these little, I don't know what I call those. I just call them little side dishes. You know, they used to have the little where you could put your seeds or your little chicken bones or whatever. Or they could just be little individual dessert dishes. I like the little things. That. And then. I don't remember what these are called. And I think I paid 99 cents for them too. See, I'm telling you the prices because you too can do the same thing. If you like to get out and roam around shop, this is the thing to look for. Last year when I was at uh, the bash stopped in a little shop on the side of the road. It was just a little shack. And here's what I bought. See this big candy dish? There's also a small candy dish. I think I paid about $2 each, as I recall. Be careful here. I'm kind of clumsy. Now let's see what I want to show you next. I call these the little boat, boat dishes. They're, they're just little. See how they're made? Now, I think one of these is Fostoria and the other is not. Probably Whitehall. 
The Fostoria is clearer and it's heavier. And the ends are a little different. Notice the difference in the way the top is shaped. One comes in a curly cue. Other one just looks like the head of a bird. These, this is the Whitehall. This is Fostoria. These are things you need to know when you go out looking for this pattern. Here's another candy dish. I love it. I like the little knob on the top. Now, let me, I, when I say they glisten, they do. They glisten in the sunlight. They're just gorgeous. All right. Here's another of my favorites, of course. The handles. It's a bowl. A bowl. It's got handles. It's so pretty. I fill that with strawberries. Fruit salad. You've got it made. They'll eat the fruit just because it's pretty. Under that are plates. Here's the plate with the handles. See the handle? They both got handle. So you can use those together. Underneath them, you've got the lip. Call this the lip when the the little triangle come up like that. Can you see it? These are too heavy. Take them. Here's this one I think is about 13 inches. Here's the big one. There's, this is another big one that has a pedestal under it, and I set it down in my punch bowl with it stand. Now, Jan bought me that punch bowl. It had 30 cups to match. Now, doesn't that call for a party? And I've got the perfect punch. I used a punch for my mother's 100th birthday party. And I don't think there's a recipe you can find any better. One of these days, I'll give you that punch recipe. Now, let's see what's here. Okay, there's your punch bowl. Uh, I want to show you this. You see this small picture? And here's the large one. Now, I want to tell you about these. Take a look at the handle on this small one. You see? where it comes, I'm gonna set this down. The handle comes, can you tell? Okay, almost right at the top, right at the top, that's your handle. That tells you this is Fostoria American. Now I'm gonna show you the big one. The lip on it is small. It doesn't spread out. See the handle? See how the handle drops down from the top? There's a space there before you get to the handle. That tells you this is not a story of American. This is Whitehall. I bought it before I realized. I looked at it and I, I was in doubt about it, but I went ahead and bought it. And I don't care about that. It has the look, and if I need a big water pitcher, I've got it. All right, there's another bowl, and I also think there's something about this bowl that tells me, oh, I know what it is. This is not Fostoria American either. The coloring is not as clear 
And if you look at the feet, the feet come down. I don't, I'm trying to get you to see it. Okay, see the one in the back? This one right here. See how that's made? Now let me show you another one. This is so you can compare this little dish. Now look at the feet. Let's see if I can get it right. These are what you call the dog feet. Right? See how it comes out at this, you know, actually this way. Now, right in the center, you can feel a line. And that's what tells you it's Fostoria American. That's the difference between Look at the feet. This is upside down, of course. Now, look at the feet. Ah, there we go. See, you can see the difference? I just want to make sure that you, when you're shopping, that that's what you look at if they've got feet. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Here's another small vase, pretty little vase. If you had enough of those, you could set one at each place setting on the table and be very pretty, very pretty. This is a cream pitcher. And here is a dish. I don't know what this dish is for, but it's great at Valentine's Day because it's shaped like a heart. It's about three and a half, four inches deep. And I think I paid about a dollar ninety nine for that. All right. You can't see this very well, so I'm going to have to bring these forward and let you see the different sizes. These all have names. I'm going to call this a juice glass. Just the right size for juice for me. This I would call maybe dirty. Got something right there. I need to wash them. So, yeah, I need to wash them all. Make them shine better. Okay, see the difference in size? And also I want you to see the space, how you can hold that underneath. And you can do the same with this little one. You can get your fingers around that little pedestal. Now, if I was holding the white hall, the bottom of the glass comes right down to the base on both of them. You cannot get your fingers around that pedestal. That's the difference between Fostoria American and Whitehall. Here's two more glasses. We're graduating in size. See, this is definitely this is definitely Story American. Now, the difference between it and the big water glass for Whitehall is the bottom of this is fatter. It's what I say, call it. It comes down fatter right to the base. This one has a more delicate shape to it. That's the only way I know to describe it. I don't know which glass this is, but I'm going to say it's probably a water glass. You see, it's got a long stem to it, water glass. Um, 
All right, so one, two, three, four sizes of glasses right here. And there's also a straight glass. I've got one and I've never seen another one. The straight glass just comes straight down that's in the Fostoria line, and I'm going to guess that it is either a water glass or it's an iced tea glass. You've already seen my square cake stand. This is the one Jan gave me for Christmas. Here's examples of your dessert dishes, sherbet dishes, dessert dishes, whatever you want to call them. This one, see, one is, they're, they're flat around the top. Of course they would be, you couldn't eat out of them if they weren't. But see, one is a little, a little taller than the other. Yeah, let's see if I can get those even, yeah. And then there's a tall one. I don't think I brought it, put it out. I've got several of each of these three sizes. Oh, yes, of course. I don't want to forget my candle holders. I was in Florida visiting a friend. And we went in a big Goodwill store. Of course, at that point, the only thing I was looking for was Fostoria. And I knew this pattern already. You see this, see how that? And there was a pair of them. Uh, I think they had it, the set priced at $15. I managed to talk them down to 12. But I wanted them because you're not gonna find too many of these around and I was getting the set. And I'd been wanting the double candle holders for a long, long time. And I said, there's no doubt about it. These candle holders are going home with me. I think that just about covers most of my Fostoria over in this cabinet. Let's see if I'm able to turn this a little bit so that you can see inside the... No, you can't tell much about it. But these shelves are all filled with Fostoria. Now, over... Hold on just a minute. Just stay right where you are. I'm going to try to aim my camera over to one side. This may or may not work. We'll find out. I've got everything you can think of in piled around. Whoops. You can't see it too well, but that cabinet is filled with Fostoria American. I really wish I could have taken this video in the morning when you could just really appreciate the beauty of these dishes. Now, I only know of one person that might want this when I'm gone. And I think I'm training her very well. She's starting to like Granny Pat's collections, and I'm glad she is, because I've already given her one set of dishes, and she's waiting to get the rest of those dishes someday, someday. I've got a birthday coming up in two months. I'm going to be 87 years old, and you know, when I turned 80, Jan and Two more friends 
We got in the car and we headed for Nashville, Tennessee. We stayed in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. If you're ever around that area, you definitely want to go to Franklin. It's got a beautiful little historic district. Good restaurant. It's pretty. It's pretty there. And that's where we stayed. And uh, I don't know why I was telling you this. Must have had a reason to saying I'm going to Nashville. Oh, because it was my birthday then. And we got to go to the Opryland uh, entertainment that night. And I'm not going to tell you the country music star that was there because I didn't like him. He sang two songs. We sat an hour and a half waiting to see him come out on the stage and sing two songs. We didn't know either one of them. I said, no, not coming back for this kind of music anymore. So we went on to uh, TGI Friday. It rained, rained, rained like you wouldn't believe. We had one big umbrella. My daughter's husband had one of those big old Georgia Bulldog umbrellas. There are four of us trying to walk under that umbrella. And four of us had one shoulder and arm stuck out from under that umbrella. And we were getting soaked, soaked. Well, we got to TGI Friday and we sat in a booth. Okay, it's my birthday. Mom, order, order a drink. Well, first I have to tell you that when we left the hotel, I carried just a little clutch bag because I didn't want to be burdened with a big purse, especially in the rain. I didn't bring a thing with me except money and my credit card. That's all I had. When we order, they started ordering the drinks, they had to show their ID, driver's license ID. The, the, the three girls showed theirs and they wanted to see mine. Well, I don't have it with me. I left it back at the hotel. They couldn't serve me without ID. And my daughter said, it's her birthday. She's 80 years old. I think she's old enough to order a drink. I'm sorry. Can't serve her a drink unless she's got her ID. Get the manager. That's my daughter talking. Get the manager. He's right over behind that glass window over there. So she goes over and she's asking him and we can see him shaking his head no. No, she came back and she said, I'm sorry. So I drank a Dr. Pepper while they had a mixed drink on my birthday. That sort of ended that. Now, I know I've talked too long. I didn't have anything special I wanted to tell you. But when I get back from the bash in Tecum... Wait a minute. Tecum... I can't think of uh, the name of it. It's Tecumka, Alabama. It's in Alabama. Just remember that. When I get back, I'll be showing you all the goodies that I find at the thrift shop. And I'm going to get to tour one of the beautiful, beautiful homes there. I'm on the invitation list. So... Susan and Jan and I are, go are going to tour that house, and I just can't wait to see how beautiful it is. And we're going to meet a friend there. Susan knows him from years ago when they both taught in the same school in Texas. He lives near where we're going to be, and I've met him through Facebook. 
we've corresponded a good bit. So I'm anxious to meet this new Facebook friend. You'd be surprised what nice friends you can meet on Facebook. I think I need to close this out and I'm going to see what I can find to eat and I'm not cooking anything. If it's not in the refrigerator and I can stick it in the microwave, then I guess I just go hungry tonight. Folks, I'm glad I'm back with you and I hope you will stay with me. I haven't had too many comments lately. But I've got about 859 subscribers. That's wonderful. But I want to get 1,000 subscribers. So you help me. You recommend Chit Chat with Granny Pat to your friends. And maybe they'll learn to like me too and think of me as the next door neighbor that says, come on over and we'll either have coffee or Dr. Pepper, whichever you like best. So thank you for watching me. I'm gonna come a little closer. See, I've had my head cut off at, in this one. I've tried to avoid my cleavage. I don't want anybody staring at my cleavage at 80, almost 87. You don't need to be concerned about those things. It's been fun and I'll enjoy hearing from you. Bye-bye.